All ships must carry certain emergency and life-saving equipment. This equipment must meet minimum standards and must be properly tested. In this video, I will discuss life-saving equipment that should be present on board ship. One thing to keep in mind that is not all ships have all of this life-saving equipment I mentioned in this video. It depends on the ship's type, number of passengers and crew on board, and the equipment pertaining to safety regulation that determine the type and quantity of life-saving equipment available. Number one is the life wrap and inflatable buoyant apparatus. These are the secondary means of life-saving equipment on ship. Inflation of life wrap is done with carbon dioxide from the storage cylinder packed within the wrap inside a container. They may be launched via the beach cradles or free full racks David. Launch wraps are launched usually from a single David. They are first inflated on board, boarded and then lowered into the water. Life wraps are subjected to a number of tests such as drop test, jump test, weight test, towing test and etc. Some additional tests like damage test, inflation test, pressure test, same strain test are peculiar only to inflatable life wraps. Number two in our list is APERB or Emergency Positioning Indicating Radio Beacon. How does a rescue ship reach the exact location of a disaster? It's quite obvious it cannot be done visually as the distances are too large for visual navigation. Then how does the rescue team reach the exact site of the disaster? This happens with the aid of geographic coordinates sent via radio signals to a satellite receiver by APERB so that the rescue efforts can be initiated at the earliest at the exact location of the disaster. These are buoyant electronic devices which float on water when a ship sinks and begin transmitting radio signals with geographic coordinates. Next in our list is Emerson suit. Why did people die despite wearing life jackets after the Titanic sank? The answer is hypothermia. Well, that's where the survival suits become increasingly important. They are also called immersion suits, are used as protection overalls. Their main function is to reduce the body heat loss of a person in cold water and hence prevent death due to hypothermia. Typical designs allow the body temperature to prevent falling below 35 degrees Celsius for 6 hours for a person in the water at 0 degrees Celsius. Next is the life jacket. Like rescue boats, personal flotation devices also come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and designs. They may be either of solid buoyancy type with closed cell, foam, or maybe inflatable. Inflation can be done either orally or carbon dioxide cartridge or combination of both. We've all seen such life jackets present under the sets of every commercial airline. Life jackets are fitted with whistles to grab the attention of rescue people as well as a light which illuminates as soon as it touches the water to help in easy spotting people in distress. Alternatively, a chemical light stick and a reflective material may be used. The life jackets are also subjected to various tests like temperature, cycling, buoyancy, fire, stability, and strength. These are the common life-saving equipment present in all small and large vessels. You may have spotted them even on the sides of swimming pools. They are fitted around the perimeter of ships where the deck and are meant to be thrown rapidly to a person overboard. Next is distress signals. As if you watch the movie Titanic, you must have seen the crew sending distress signals with the use of flares. Distress signals are typically parachute flares which can be spotted by nearby vessels and rescue personnel and determine the location of the ship in distress. Three rockets should be fired vertically. It must be ensured that the parachute flares ejection happens after a height of 300 meters. Also the rate of descent should not exceed 5 meters per second and should sustain burning for at least 40 seconds. They should also function efficiently when projected at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal. It should be established by laboratory tests that the average luminous intensity of flame material which should be borne uniformly must be a minimum of 3000 CD with the color being vivid red. 
Next is the rescue boats. These are small lightweight boats designed with the objective of rescuing people in distress and towing the survival crafts such as life rafts and buoyant apparatus. They are designed as such to be launched in minutes and must remain stable when recovering a person in the water from either side of the boat. They are usually day with launch and come in different shapes and sizes. The material used for construction is usually fiberglass with the addition of inflated rubber buoyancy chambers for extra stability. The last in our list is the lifeboat. They must be available in sufficient quantity and support the required capacity and size such that the total number of passengers aboard can evacuated from either port or starboard. This is done so that in case the ship is capsizing to one side, let's say port, the lifeboats can be lowered from the starboard side and everyone on board can be saved in small vessels. Such as harbor and river crafts, open lifeboats and semi-enclosed lifeboats are used for all large vessels. For all large vessels plying in oceans, totally enclosed lifeboats are provided. This is done to ensure better protection against the weather and sea. They are fitted with small diesel engines for self-propulsion at a speed of around 6 knots and carry fuel for 24 hours of operation. These are the important life-saving equipment which allows to save the lives of crew and passengers in case of accident and make a ship safe from the point of view of safety of people. A ship sailing in the middle of the ocean has to be self-sustainable by all means as external aid might take hours to reach the designated site. And when we talk about self-sustainability, safety becomes one of the primary areas of concern. Thank you for watching. I hope you find this helpful. See you in my next video.